The Rams have acquired Baker Mayfield. When does he play and what sort of impact does he have? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. My name is Travis Rogers. You can follow me on Twitter under that name, at Travis Rogers. You can also, of course, subscribe to Locked on Rams, which I would highly recommend. You get your Rams content every single day, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. And, of course, you're going to want to check us out on YouTube as well. Our Locked on Rams YouTube page is a great way uh, to take in the pod. We're doing great on, lo- on uh, the Locked on Rams YouTube page, so make sure that you see that. When I am not doing Locked on Rams, I host the Travis and Sliwa show every day from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. on 710 ESPN right here in Los Angeles. And I also host the Rams pregame show, the halftime show, and the postgame show on that very same flagship station ESPN 710. So we'll be getting ready to do the Rams and the Raiders tomorrow from SoFi Stadium. We'll get the pregame show started about 3.30. So if you are in and around Los Angeles, make sure you check that out. Kirk Morrison and I will have you uh, with that one. And then immediately following the game, we got the postgame show as well. So uh, obviously we're going to talk some Baker Mayfield on today's pod, but not before I remind you that today's pod is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online where the game starts. I uh, want to talk a little bit at the end of the pod about Odell Beckham Jr. Could the Rams actually kind of get back in this because of um, his inability to get healthy enough to play this season, potentially at least? Uh, maybe a little bit of a silver lining. We'll talk about that uh, in just a couple of minutes. But let's start right here. Let's start with the story of the day, um, the story of yesterday, as a matter of fact. The Rams claim Baker Mayfield off of waivers. Um, let's just, you know, the initial reaction when you hear Baker Mayfield's name, I think, is pretty negative, right? This is somebody that was the number one overall pick not that long ago, by the way, who has been terribly underwhelming who has been um, unsuccessful, whose numbers are pedestrian at best, who has had very um, few and far between moments where you're like, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, Somebody that by all accounts was not particularly popular with his teammates. Somebody that uh, was only got a a fourth round or fifth round pick from Carolina, uh, washed out of there pretty quickly. And then they placed him on waivers a week ago and the Rams picked him up. Um, earlier this week, that's not the projected or the uh, the uh, trajectory of a number one pick that you're hoping for, right? When you compare that to somebody like Matthew Stafford, went to a bad team but put up bananas numbers, ultimately landed in the right spot with the Rams, won a Super Bowl a year ago. Um, lots of commercials and somebody that is kind of omnipresent for somebody. Look, it makes a lot of sense that Peyton Manning's on every commercial on TV. It's Peyton Manning. Won the Super Bowl. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's charming. He's funny. He's a good actor, right? Peyton Manning should be on every other commercial on TV. It makes sense. Uh, Baker Mayfield? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, but I, I think he's a pretty good actor, actually. I think those progressive commercials he does are pretty good. But it's not um, it's not commiserate with his performance, right? Great players should have lots of commercials. Uh, guys that have not performed at a high level, probably should not. Or at least I think that's part of the reason why people have a negative connotation about him. Um, Fair enough, right? Okay, has he been what the Browns had hoped? No. Was he what uh, Carolina was hoping when they acquired him? Obviously not, because he's done. Who cares? Who cares what happened in Cleveland? Who cares what happened in Carolina? Because the Rams are risking literally nothing in doing this. This is what I've been thinking about this. And I think the analogy is this is a penny slot, right? You have to put in a penny. You got to pull up the lever. Are you going to win? Probably not. Could you get something? Maybe. Could you hit a jackpot? Yeah. I mean, theoretically, yes, you could. 
but there's absolutely no risk. They didn't have to give up any compensation. They have to pick up his salary for the remainder of the year, which is about a million bucks, which in NFL terms is a penny, right? Um, and you might find some things along the way. And, and, and the things that you can find, I think, are pretty darn significant. Number one, look, John Wolford has been game. Bryce Perkins has been game. And they're trying to do the best they can under less than ideal circumstances, to say the least. Um, but they are what they are. These are guys that were not highly regarded prospects. These are guys that um, are hanging on by their fingernails to their NFL careers. Um, and Baker Mayfield's former number one pick. I understand that he was not a number one pick in the way that Peyton Manning or Matthew Stafford was. I, I, I get that, okay? But you don't get picked number one if there's no ability there. You don't get picked number one if it's just this, hey, you know, uh, he, he can't do anything right. Uh, he's played poorly. I get it. But the raw material is there. We think that Sean McVay is a pretty darn good coach. We think he's pretty darn good with quarterbacks. See what he can do with this guy. He's better than John Wolford. He's better than Bryce Perkins. And while winning games is not the only thing that matters over these last five games, uh, it does matter. Look, look, going three and fourteen, finishing the game, the the season with an eleven game losing streak. I mean, what a disaster that would be. Bobby Wagner's out there playing as you know what off. Jalen Ramsey's out there playing. These guys that are on that field putting their bodies in, in harm's way. They deserve the opportunity to go out there and win a couple of football games. You're not playing for a draft pick necessarily. Let's try to win some of these games. Baker Mayfield would give you a better chance of winning these games. I think that's part of it. That's part of the reason that you bring him in, that this offense has been so anemic. Um, Mayfield can't be any worse, and the potential is he could be significantly better. I think that's why you do what you do. I think that's why he's here. I think that's why the Rams did what they did. And then there's this. What if it's somewhere between okay to, hey, that's not half bad. Now you've got a backup quarterback, potentially. Look, to, I'm sure Baker Mayfield's not thinking I can be the Rams backup. I'm thinking, I'm sure he's thinking I'm going to come in here, I'm going to light it up, and I'm going to play really well. And so he's going to say, you know what? Let's give Baker one more shot as our starter and see what happens. One of those teams that's kind of in transition, it's a good landing spot for a guy like Mayfield. So let's see what the Rams can do to develop that. And if he decides, you know what? I really like it here. The Rams need to upgrade that backup quarterback position. Mayfield is arguably exactly what you would be looking for in a backup quarterback, a guy with lots of NFL experience that not just can come in and play a couple of snaps before the guy, you know, gets his finger popped back in or whatever it may be short term. But hey, listen. Let's say that the Rams were having a season. Let's say that the Rams were having a season where they're in a playoff position or competing for a playoff position. And exactly what has happened so far has happened, right? Matthew Stafford is down for a few weeks. We got to play the next month without him. But we need him back as quickly as possible because we want to go make another playoff run. Isn't Mayfield the perfect guy for that spot or a guy like Mayfield? a guy that has experience, that's been in this league, that's not going to be freaked out. He might not play great, but he's not going to be freaked out because he hasn't been around. He's a former NFL starter, former number one pick. Let's see what he's got. I don't understand the, the downside to it at all. And here's the last thing we'll say about before we talk about whether or not he's going to play tomorrow night. If he stinks, if he's a bad guy, if the teammates hate him, if he won't, if he's uncoachable, if McVeigh and Les Snead and the staff kind of looked around and say, well, this was a huge mistake, get rid of him. What did you lose? Nothing. You know, a little bit of money. Like the, Ram the Rams have plenty of money. The NFL has plenty of money. The, the money. There is literally no risk to this. If it's a complete catastrophe on every front, he's worse than Bryce Perkins. He's worse than John Wolford. He doesn't know his, you know what, from his elbow. Cut him. Get rid of him. Send him home. Say, thanks for the nice try. It ain't going to work out. Adios. Why not? What is the downside? I really don't think there is one. The upside is probably relatively modest if there is one. But there is no, oh, my gosh, I can't believe we did this. And now we are stuck with blank. That doesn't exist. If anything, if it works out pretty well and he goes somewhere else, you get a compensatory draft pick. These are all very good things in the world of the Los Angeles Rams. And if he plays well and you win a couple of games down the stretch, what's wrong with that? Nothing. 
I, I, I like it. Like, it's not going to change. They, they're not going to make the playoffs. They're not going to go on a run. I don't expect him to all of a sudden look like, uh, you know, the best quarterback I've ever seen in my life, but he might be better than what they're throwing out there right now. And if he is, and it continues to develop, that's a good thing for this team. All right. So the next question, of course, is does he play against the Raiders on Thursday night? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. Now, word from our friends at Turo, the world's largest car sharing marketplace, right? Um, when you go on a trip, you want to find that car, right? And you don't want to deal with all the rental car nonsense. Turo is the way to do it. Go find your next best car at Turo.com. I've done it myself. We went on a vacation up to Idaho, Coeur d'Alene, beautiful. And we used Turo. And we rented a, a huge SUV because we had seven people in our group. We needed a big car. We went on tour. We found exactly what we wanted. They met us at the airport. They gave us the car. We went and did our trip. We came back, gave it right back to them. The host absolutely amazing. So if you got a situation like that, maybe you need a truck to run some errands. Maybe you want to try uh, an electric car, right? All of these things. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. You will love it. Find your next ride at Turo.com. Turo.com. You will love it. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so Rams have the Thursday night game this week. They got the uh, Las Vegas Raiders coming to town. And the Raiders are kind of in it. The Raiders are on a three-game winning streak. The Raiders have a ton of good players. I don't. I really did think that the Raiders were a pretty good team to start the year. I, I thought that the Raiders would get it figured out. I thought that they actually looked pretty good in the playoffs last year. They closed very strong a year ago. And I had um, pretty positive feelings about that team. And then it happened. They started two and seven. They were, they were a mess. Um, and you say, oh, okay, that's it. Well, they're kind of doing what they did last year. They've dug themselves a little bit of a deeper hole, but they're going to be playing for something on Thursday night. They're going to be playing in front of a lot of their fans at SoFi Stadium here in L.A., and it's an important game for the Raiders. Um, it's not for the Rams for all the reasons that we know um, far too well over the course of this season. Um, it's a game that, you know, you want to snap a six-game losing streak. Obviously, you want to put a good product out there. It's a nationally televised. I shouldn't say nationally. They're all nationally televised. This is a um, standalone game where football fans are going to watch. Look, I've watched the Bears and the Commanders play in Jacksonville and all these terrible dudes. Everybody watches these games. So people are going to be looking. You want to put a good performance out there. So the question becomes, do you play Baker Mayfield? Kid, he was wherever he was yesterday. They, uh, the Rams reportedly sent him a playbook that he was going to read on his way to Los Angeles. Presumably, he'll be with the team today, ready to go, um, practice, go through a walkthrough, whatever it is that they're doing. Do you play him tomorrow night on Thursday? There, there are kind of two schools of thought. I'll give them both to you, and then I'll tell you which one that I kind of land in. The first school of thought is um, there's no way he's going to be able to get even moderately prepared to play an NFL football game with a new coach, with new teammates, with a new scheme, with about a day's preparation, okay, that you can't teach him. That Sean McVay's offense, by all accounts, is pretty complicated, and you're going to need to understand the language. You might understand a little bit of it, but you're not going to understand all of it and you're not going to be able to perform it, and then you're setting yourselves up for failure. You're putting him out there in a uh, standalone NFL game and putting him in a position where success is very, very unlikely. That's that's one way to look at it, and that's why you wouldn't do it. That John Wolford may not be healthy, not able to go, but Bryce Perkins did start a couple of weeks ago. He has been with your organization a couple of years. You can put him out there, cross your fingers, and hope that something goes your way, and you stay competitive in the game, and maybe you can find a way to win it. That's and, and then get Mayfield. You got a long week. You got to obviously this is a short week, which means you get a long week next week. You actually not only just because you're on Thursday, but you don't play again until the following Monday. So the Rams have the better part of about 10, 11 days to get him up to speed in Green Bay against a not a very good Packers team. And maybe that's an opportunity for him to make his Rams debut. That's case number one. Case number two is why not? <laughs> why not? How bad could it be? How much worse could he be than John Wolford? How much worse could he be than Bryce Perkins? That he does know NFL football. That, look, he's not going to know the offense like um, 
that Matthew Stafford knows it or the way that Jared Goff knew it a few years ago. But if you just say, hey, listen, th there are some fundamentals to NFL football. Run a dig, run a rub, a go, a wheel, or whatever it is that I'm throwing it to you, right? Or we're going to run this ball in the A. It, it, there, there are some fundamentals, right? That he can hand the ball off. He knows how to run this play or that play or a boot. That you could just dumb it down to like high school level stuff that he knows how to play. And we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. Um, and maybe he brings a spark. Maybe there's a little life. Maybe he makes a play with his legs. He, he obviously has some confidence in him. I mean, he's part of the reason that people don't like him is because he just kind of struts around like he owns the place, even when he's playing like you know what. So, all right, that's the other school. I tend to skew more towards the first one. I tend to skew more like, like while there is kind of a bleep it element to the Rams at this point in the season, there are other guys out there that are fighting for jobs. There are other guys out there that maybe are fighting for a job with the Rams or fighting for a job with one of the other 31 teams. And to put a player out there that is completely unprepared is unfair to the other 10 guys that are on that offense. Um, I, I tend to believe that that's the right way to do it. I tend to believe that um, Sean McVay will not – this may be a, a bit strongly worded, but I don't think he's going to disrespect the other guys on the team by putting him out there with about six seconds of preparation. I don't think he's going to do that. That being said, I'm not betting my house on it. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Um, I would wait a week. I doubt you still, you get him four games, you get him for a month. You're going to have plenty of time to figure out if you like him. You're going to have plenty of time to figure out whether or not he's your backup of the future. I don't know if you need to rush it to the extent of getting him going uh, on, on literally a few hours of preparation. I think like that might be uh, a bridge too far and setting him up um, for absolutely no success at all. And now you've, you've your, your first presentation to the world is, is pretty ugly. Um, I don't think that they'll do that, but I'm not swearing to it. So don't, don't hold me to that one. All right, coming up next, I want to talk about OBJ. No one has signed him. Cowboys basically said, yeah, I don't know, man, this doesn't look like what we were hoping for. Could the Rams slide back into the picture? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, news, and analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer to esports, we've got all of it covered at BetOnline.net. And if you love podcasts, sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline where the game starts and my suggestion to you would be stay away from the Rams, right? Who knows how the Rams are going to do it. I don't know who's playing. I don't know who's not playing. I don't know in out short week, stay away from the Rams, find another game. All this good stuff is at bet online where the game starts. All right. So OBJ is still available to anybody that wants to offer him a long-term contract, go back to the end of last season. And it seemed like it was a virtual certainty that OBJ was going to re-sign with the Rams. He gets injured in the Super Bowl, but what a great fit he was. What a great impact he had on the team. He was on a track to potentially be the MVP of the Super Bowl before he got hurt. He was he was great. He, he not just was a good player for the Rams. He was a great player and seemed to fit in really well. Sean McVay liked him. His teammates liked him and vice versa. That He seemed very comfortable. Obviously, the injury kind of changed things. And everybody kind of said, okay, hold on. Let's see how this is going to shake out. But even at that point... It felt like the Rams and OBJ were headed towards moving forward together. Obviously, that has not happened. Obviously, Odell was um, put off to the, the point of whatever it is that the Rams offered him. He did not feel that that was um, commiserate with his value at the time. And he started to look elsewhere. And the Rams kind of just shrugged their shoulders, took the name plate off the locker and said, yeah, we get it. We're having a terrible season. He wants to go not only make some money. This is his last time to probably hit it reasonably big. But he wants to be on a good team, and right now we're not a good team. I get it. Cowboys, Bills, Giants. These are the teams that Odell was connected with. Um, he hadn't signed with anybody. He hadn't signed with the Cowboys, which seemed like it was very close. That even after um, the incident on the airplane, Jerry Jones was saying, yeah, I, I, I think that we're still pretty good on him, and, and I don't think that's going to deter us from making a decision. Um, he came in, and apparently his – physicals didn't look that good that he does not look like he's going to be ready to play until maybe the middle of January which as we know is well into the playoffs 
and how much could he get up to? We, we saw what Odell looked like when he first came to the Rams. It, his first week or two, it wasn't much. Now, it got going pretty quickly after that. But what this could mean, let's just say that he's physically not able to go and he doesn't sign with anybody. Rams could slide right back in there. They're obviously going to need to find a way to get some offense for next season. Allen Robinson clearly has not worked out the way that they wanted it to. Odell and Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford obviously have a, a, a really good working relationship. If they can make the money work and he's healthy and ready to go, I don't really see a reason why that couldn't be reignited. I don't really see a reason why you couldn't start this thing all over again. Look, everybody, it works for everybody. Now, if the Bills or the Giants are like, listen, bring them in, let's give it a shot, and, and maybe we'll try to get – okay, then it's it's dead in the water. But if they don't, if you get back in the – the Rams are right back in it. Maybe they're not – exactly where they were a year ago coming off of a Super Bowl. Maybe there's a little bit of, of hard feelings because they didn't get it done a year ago, but I wouldn't imagine too bad. He likes the Rams. He likes Los Angeles. It's a good quarterback. It's a good coach. It's a good organization. Um, you could slide right back. You don't have to learn a new offense. There's no learning curve. It's a possibility. I don't know if it's a great possibility, but it's something that uh, if he doesn't sign, I think the Rams are right back in the mix all over again, and I really like that if they could add him to that team next year. All right, we'll do a crossover coming up tomorrow with Locked on Raiders. Until then, thanks for making us your first listen every single day. Now, for your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today pod. Biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and, of course, the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams' house.